Hello and welcome to this Eyes of Harmony podcast on this ch- on this podcast channel, whatever. Yeah, we're talking about Doctor <laughs> Who, new, old, and upcoming. Um, at the minute, there's not much news because obviously we're kind of in that hi- not a hiatus, but you know the gap between seasons. Um, yeah. So yeah, and there's kind of a lack of news. Not much on the DVD front or really merchandise front either. But uh, yeah. there was there was World Emoji Day this week. Which uh, that was something. Do you know what World Emoji Day is, Comrade? Do you know why it's a world? I mean, World Emoji Day. I don't know why. I can figure out <laughs> what kind of. Okay, so basically, on on iPhones, um, I think oh, maybe Androids. I'm not sure, but um, basically, so the calendar emoji on um, on like iPhones is basically. Uh, it's like you know like the day to day you know rip off kind of calendars yeah. the day that they chose for the emoji is july 17th so okay. it's world emoji day and uh basically it made me it made me think of a uh, um the episode smile which was the second episode of series 10 and actually mm. i want to say that you know that one kind of it surprised me on how not bad it was like by concept yeah. it sounded terrible and hmm. in reality, it wasn't too bad. So I was thinking that maybe yeah. this topic we could, could talk about like other episodes which we were either expecting to be really good and weren't, or episodes that we weren't really, you know, thinking too much about and kind of completely blew us out the water, kind of surprised us. Mm. So, okay, can any come to the top of your head where they kind I, of... I guess the first example of one which I was expecting to be good but ended up being bad was um, The Beast Below, just because of the design of the um, smile thing. Smilers, yeah. Smilers? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I was, pre- uh, you know, I was looking forward to that, and it sucked. So... <laughs> <laughs> It, that was it was a big disappointment I mean even Stephen Moffat apologised for that one um, which I think is quite strange actually to, to retroactively go back and apologise for an mm-hmm. episode like is he the only one who's done that I don't I don't know I can't really think of any other writer who's gone back and been like yikes sorry sorry for that one in Doctor Who um, regards yeah in Doctor Who regards um, I don't know I don't know you'd have to look through because maybe there's some classic writer that did it or something but mm. um for me i was really excited for asylum of the daleks that was something i, I just mm. loved loved love the concept of uh, yeah. you know classic daleks i didn't even really care how much the classic daleks appeared but you know i wanted at least one to talk on screen or you know um but you know they just did all the russell t ones talking i was like they did you know like shots in matt smith and karen gillen with the old Daleks. It was like, well, you can have the old Daleks. Don't like do the whole press push of Daleks, classic Daleks being in it, and you know, even just special weapons Dalek. And especially considering they name drop one of the Daleks as like being kind of from pa- Planet of the Daleks. Yeah, well, they they did so many. They did they not just that one. They did like Vulcan, um, which I think is the second Doctor. I think that's yeah. evil. Or is that power? Oh, God. I thought that was power. Yeah, it might be power. Yeah, I think it is power. Um, but yeah, they did all those name drops, and it was like, mm, we got more classic Daleks and bloody uh, magicians of the Frenchish, and uh, yeah. which is familiar, which is uh, great. I mean, I think that was somewhat of an apology for that to an extent. I think, yeah, actually retroactively, I think it was like, yikes, <laughs> we kind of promised something that we didn't deliver on. And, Here, you know, take them all. <laughs> yeah, so now let's just put a horrible amalgamation in the room. It just looks so weird, actually. When I go mm. back and think about Magician's Apprentice, it just it's really weird. Like, yeah. well, which is familiar is more where we saw the Daleks, but it was just it was just very odd seeing all these different coloured. It was a bit like the paradigm Daleks, like you know, just mm. if you're going to go with classic designs, then just have that design unless you're going to do a civil war then obviously you need kind of two different designs which obviously is hopefully what they're going to be doing in a uh revolution of the daleks why do they have to do so many r's man (laughs) yeah it's it's i was fine i was completely fine but now they've done revolution i've just completely because it was resolution (laughs) then yeah it's completely mucked me up i was like revelation and resurrection i was like fine i was like "Mm, got Mm. those down 
not anymore. No. <laughs> no. It's it's gone. My it's old age. It just age. needs retribution and I mean I revival. I, I, I honestly would not put it past them to use yeah. Reputation of the Daleks. <laughs> Um, dance, dance, revolution of the Daleks. Dalek mix. Yeah, <laughs> that would be uh that would be something. Turn to the left, <laughs> turn to the right, <laughs> and exterminate all around you. What a what a game that would be. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, ooh, um, enough one. The Daemons was uh one I wasn't really expecting too much from. And because uh, I'd kind of seen the design of a weird gargoyle creature, and I mean it's not great, uh, but actually, like especially part one, insane, so good, like, like it's crazy, like how good the demons is actually. Um, yeah. Maybe my favorite John Pertwee. Oh hmm. uh, no. Um, well, I'm going through my oh, watch, okay. so yeah. I'll get to it eventually. I mean, my gut instinct says like, I kind of, for me, like Spearhead and Space is probably still might be my favorite, maybe all the Silurians. Like something in that first season, really. It uh, is so but, good that first season. Mm. So good. But yeah, I, I, I know that I'd consider my best John Pertwee yet. I'd need to think about that. Uh, another one which, you know, kind of going along, yeah, like, not having any expectations and ended up, like, really enjoying it. I think The Ark, just The Ark, like, the William, oh, the Hartnell, William Hartnell story. Yeah, that's a great one, actually. I think that's really underrated. I was Nobody talks about it, but I was really pleasantly surprised when I was watching it. It's really nice how different it is, um, and kind of surprising how the Doctor managed to steer the ship to, uh, <laughs> to land on it, you know, <laughs> in the future. <laughs> But yeah, like mm. it's great how it's like a story of two halves. Yeah. Um, two two parts, and it's it's just very interesting, you know. There's, there's different issues in in the two parts, and uh, yeah, the, I mean the cliffhanger of episode two into episode three is is smashing with mm. the the like the statue of the human has changed to the uh, oh no, I've forgotten the name. I think it begins with M. Yeah, I was thinking M. Um, the- yeah. It's something along those lines. Um, and yeah, it's great. And the statues change with their one eyes. And I think those are great costumes as well, actually. Um, they are, yeah. Very, yeah, underrated story. They got an elephant <laughs> somehow, uh, which yeah. is very cool. Um, I mean, but, that was more viable back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was very, very cool, um, that that episode. And I thought Mind of Evil definitely surprised oh, me. Oh, yeah. That was insanely yeah. good uh, and not really talked about too much and just a very simple concept yet was fantastic, you know, mm. um, going into the fears. I think I was excited for Waters of Mars, but it definitely, you know, it, you know uh, beat any expectations I had of it. Probably Midnight as well, actually. That one, always, like, you know, didn't really expect much going into it, you know, spooky in a bus, but I don't think people realised how kind of much of a great psychological thriller that episode was going to be. Like, even yeah. to this day, I get chills watching that episode. It's like, mm. even though it's, you know, family show, PG, like, it's the concept which is is scary as hell. And mm. um, the the lady who plays Sky is a fantastic actress. Yeah, uh, I've forgotten yeah. her name. But I, she was in a thing with Christopher Eccleston, which was written by Russell T. Um, and she was fantastic in that. So that's definitely where he, he, he knew her from. He probably even wrote it for her, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic. So good. God damn. Mm-hmm. God damn. But um, mm. yeah, I mean, like just talking about Smile, like that one, I knew we were like, girl, great emoji robots. This is going to be mm. trash. Yeah. I think you can kind of, because we... Yeah, we had stuff discussing that, didn't we, at that point? Yeah. So, like, channel. you can hear it. You can hear it. You could go but, back like, and hear us. It, yeah, we're talking about stuff like how incorporating those modern elements would make it seem so much uh, less timeless and whatnot. And if they'd gone whole hog on that, then sure. But I guess it wasn't necessarily tailored to modern emojis. Well, it kind of was, but it was more like... I think a bit they... more general to human emotions rather than 
actual modern culture, I guess. They pushed it more as a more gimmicky than it actually was. Like, yeah. I think that was the issue. And they only called them Emoji Bots because that's what Bill named them. That wasn't actually like their name. Like, I liked it. I liked that these, you know, little tiny robots were a big threat because they could control the nanobots and yeah you know it felt the danger was there it looked gorgeous you know that wheat field outside the city and uh you know it was it was fantastic mm. so it was awesome. linked to the classic series as well yeah the arc wasn't it the arc, the arc in space. space yeah which was also cool that was a nice one <laughs> thank god it was a good story <laughs> yeah <think. okay. laughs> but um yeah it was fantastic I really enjoyed it. I think they mm. should return to um, to the, the the satellite, in, you know, the Ark. I can't remember what it's called. Satellite. What is it? The Ark in space. It had a name. Um. Uh, Nova Beacon. That's it. Yeah, like Nova. I think they should return. It would be nice to see it in modern something. I think the Wirren would be a great villain yeah. to return. To be I honest. mean, people have kind of brought it up. I think it's just a fear of um, kind of tampering with something so classic that has the potential to go wrong and kind of, I guess, a bit of um, huge expectations on that, especially considering how long it's been. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, like the Zygons, they eventually, you know, went around and did that. Yeah. I, I think it's different in a way. Yeah. Um, the Wirren's concept was perfect like throughout the entirety of Ark in Space to where like in a way I don't know beyond what you necessarily want to do with them whereas the Zygons Terror to Zygons is absolutely great but the monster itself also left that episode with, also, with a lot of potential of where the other directions they could go with it I guess I think, well, you look, a modern day retelling of kind of Arctic space. I mean, they are species that, you know, plant their eggs in sleeping creatures and, and that's their kind of, you know, it's a bug's life cycle, yeah. really. They just have a bit more cunning to them. Um, I mean, they did, you know, they've done bug creatures. They did, you know, Unicorn and the Wasp. Um, yeah. You know, they recently did the Scorpion creatures in just series just gone. Um, and I feel like it would be a really nice, I think you can make them look really cool. Um, yeah. and just you know you just hide them well and like the whole transformation thing is slowly turning into you know one of them would look awesome I think you could do a really good job of it these days and that's kind of you know body horror stuff is always quite a strong yeah it's always been there in Doctor Who but not too recently actually they haven't done too much body horror um, no. they did the fingers in the last series which was quite good that was good but um, I'd say I can't really think of the last Cybermen obviously is always body horror. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something, you know, a bit like Waters of Mars kind of body horror. You know, where something either goes in the body or changes the human form slowly. Um uh, has it really been that long? Like where we see the transformation, so not counting like the uh Orphan fifty five, because like we don't see no. the transformation in that. Um Oh, uh, before the floods, um, I guess. Yes, that was a that was a good one. So it, it's like when the human body gets altered and they become a vessel. It's it's very creepy stuff, you know. Like um, that's you know, the stuff which I think is always the more scary, I guess, than bug eyed aliens. It's more about the you know something changing who we are and you know taking over our mm. form. I always find, to me at least, is the most horrific um kind of mm. kind of change like um while like getting exterminated or deleted is horrible at least you're dead after it it's not like someone's going around yeah. in your corpse like you know like mm. making you a nightmare to other people it's like that's the terrifying thing i think but uh yeah but uh, okay so with world emoji day uh doctor who i'm not sure you might have seen it but doctor who put out some emojis and you have to guess what the episode is from the emojis. So if you go onto your, uh, I sent it to you. So if you open the message, okay. uh, and then you've got to try and guess. I'm going to put it on screen as well now. So for those who didn't see it, can can uh, 
see it now. But yeah, I want to see how many how many you can get from. And I know the answers, so I can't. Yeah. Um, can't go along. Um. Well, I can tell number eight is Unicorn the Wasp. I mean, that's the first. That's, kind that's of a given. <laughs> obvious one. Uh. Dinosaurs on a spaceship for number six. Yep. Uh, listen for number four. Some are some are really easy, and some are really like it's tough. Yeah. They are tough. I got to say, like Doctor Who's um, Instagram game is pretty pretty strong, actually. To be honest, mm. it's like whoever, whoever's running that, I do give them props. They do some good stuff. And like it's nice that they keep it running as well. Like throughout the, you know, it's not just while the season is on are they doing stuff. They're kind of keeping mm. it going, which is good. Uh, number ten, the Doctor dances. Hey, got that? Yeah. Number two, which is familiar. Uh, close. Okay. Think more recent. Uh, what do you use a magnifying glass for? Looking. And Best if, if you're magnifying. Tr you're tr yeah, but you're trying to. If you don't know where the clues are, what are you trying to do? Um, find them. <laughs> yeah, that's the. So, what's the first thing? Ah, a witch finders. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Keep you finding those witches. Um. Uh. I love number nine. That one is the the one which I like. That was the one I couldn't get. Um, that, mm. that one and three, I, sh I I couldn't get. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, house explode. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. Do you, do you, uh, should I go for him? You gonna get any more? Yeah. Sure. Well, hey, to celebrate World Emoji Day. So number one is Spyfall. Because they're uh, doing like full with the leaves, then yeah, two witch mm, finders. Yeah. Free, free is the one I found really hard. That's knock knock, um, oh, which makes sense, sense when you see it. Yeah, but like, well, there's less of a knock. And yeah, watch the fist up. Yeah, but... it's that was yeah that was why I struggled with that one. Four is listen, obviously. Five is mm. the crimson horror. Um, with the oh. red and the oh my god. Uh, six is dinosaurs being chased by a spaceship. Um, seven is this one was hard. Midnight. Oh, which is like oh, very yeah. smart done. Eight, obviously, unicorn and the wasp. Nine was Boomtown, which I found that one very hard to to get for Boomtown. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then ten Doctor Dances. So yeah, that was a nice little little thing in there. For a world emoji day, well done mm. BBC Instagram. I had some fun with that for like a half an hour. <laughs> and I got very uh, frustrated. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was that. Um, so the other thing we were actually talking about uh, yesterday, because I was at Comrade's celebrate his birthday. Happy mm. birthday, Comrade! You can turn twenty-two this week. <laughs> Way we're getting old. <laughs> Yeah. I, just, I just think that you know, we were seven uh, when Doctor <laughs> Who started again in 2005, so it's kind of been crazy long. 15 years, Jesus. Mm. Um, yeah. And we were talking about basically Four to Doomsday, which was uh, like mm. the, the second... Why is Siri activating? Go away. Four to Doomsday. <laughs> Sometimes it just randomly Siri activates. really likes Four to Doomsday. Yeah, just wanted to, uh, like... Four hey. to Doomsday? That's my favourite. <laughs> Did you talk about Four to Doomsday? Honestly, like, one time I asked it, like, the weather, and it started telling me something completely unrelated. It was, it was really strange. Really, really weird. I, d I don't know what the hell it was, was going on. It's a strange... series of strange... Yeah. Siri, be strange. But, um... Yeah, so we were talking about Fourth of Doomsday and like kind of the second story of a Doctor. So I thought we could kind of go through and kind of just discuss like the second stories of like the Doctor and like are they good? Are they bad? Like what's yeah. what's going on with them? So obviously like the first Doctor's kind of second yeah. story is Daleks, which is obviously a pretty solid one. 
um, and definitely is what helped save the show. I think it definitely needed to do that sci-fi concept pretty early on, um, yeah. which is lucky it did. Because originally Marco Polo was actually going to be, I think, the second one. And they were like, oh, we can't do two historicals. Um, so, yeah, they did uh, the Daleks, which, I mean, is a fantastic seven-part story. Really helps like sort Absolutely. like the the you know the compa- companion dynamic which is which is super yeah fantastic mm. dynamic the, between the you have seven episodes to flesh that out i think does help in that regard yeah the runtime definitely does does help out and I, I think you know it was it was a strong choice and i mean you know massive credit to verity lambert for making that decision to put it as the second story in in you know ever in doctor who i still find it you know it's crazy that the daleks are in literally the second story ever and they're like yeah the nemesis like what are the chances of that happening like that's it must be like the only like not from a book because thing is you know in books mm. and stuff like adapted obviously like the white walkers in game of thrones are obviously you know in the very first episode but like when you have no future written out for you you know there's no book or anything you're literally making it up as you go like who'd have thought that the very first alien species that we come across becomes like the arch nemesis like mm. can't make this stuff up but you can mm. but you can't yeah, I mean, you can't can. but you can mm-hmm. because you can because it exists yeah. but you can't but you can that's the rules that's how it works mm. but um okay so <laughs> yeah second doctor highlanders um I don't think either Difficult of us... to judge at this point. Yeah, do you, do you actually know the Highlanders as a story or... Not particularly well, no. See, yeah. Like, I've, I've, I've listened to the odd audio clip and seen some of those the, um, pictures of it. Um, but... T- and I kind of know kind of how it ends, I guess. Well, with the, you know, with Jamie kind of sneaking onto the TARDIS and whatnot. Mm. Like, like, beyond that, no. Not, not particularly really at all <laughs> yeah i think i'm I'm waiting for that one to hopefully be animated i think it's definitely mm. one they will do i mean they mentioned it weren't they they were thinking about doing it for yeah. uh so i think it's a high chance that they, they will do that because then what the next one's the underwater menace is it after that one uh, i think so and that's why he, he has so little to do in that one because like it was basically already written and they're like yeah we're gonna add jamie and it was like oh great um mm-hmm. i think that also then they then it was the moon base i think yeah oh, god it's so it's hard like remembering that season because so much is missing but um <laughs> yeah it's solid solid story uh maybe mm. who knows <laughs> gotta mm. find out i think it's nice doing a historical one as a doctor's second story um i mm. think this is actually something that um kind of looking over each doctor, I think it's better when when you do a historical second story rather than a uh, sci-fi. Not necessarily. And, I don't know. It's to me, I feel like episode two of a series is always nice to be a historical one. Not just talking about you know Doctor's second story, but just you know like Fires of Pompeii episode two, Two from Claw episode two. Like I, I like to me, it always felt quite nice doing the historical as a second one. You do the sci-fi, big sci-fi concepts opener then you do a nice like a, a historical one um yeah. i think it just it just balances nicely and it kind of to anyone joining the show for that season it gives you a good taste of everything mm. kind of early on because the thing is i think you know modern day is counted as its own like like it's like past present future i, I think they do it like that but the issue is is like i don't find the present too interesting to see a doctor who story in um well it depends on what you do with it doesn't it i mean i i think the second episode rather than just being like established oh you know we'll go somewhere and whatever i think the second episode is important for establishing who that doctor is yeah because you've you only seen them in one scenario up to that point mm. right like whatever's opening which usually is kind of a bit chaotic kind of doctor figuring out who the doctor is and the companions figuring out who the doctor is you don't get really get a sense of their characters and what they're kind of like i think usually till the second episode and i think that is very important particularly for the next few which we're going to talk about is just like well next couple at least um 
is that their second episode was instrumental in like establishing their characters and what they kind of stand for in certain situations. Yeah, which obviously like uh, John Pertwee is, you know, the yeah, Silurians. The Silurians. <laughs> which you know that, that, that's what's vital. Yeah, like of course, Fearhead in Space. The Doctor's kind of a little bit, you know, I mean, it's a little bit chaotic to start with because, of course, you know, he's just regenerated and nobody knows who he is. Is he really the Doctor? But, you know, it, it builds up from that. The Silurians does such an excellent job of kind of setting the tone, which they kind of were looking for with this kind of grounded Earth-based story, but with the threat. This time, not an alien threat one from within like people who are and the doctor um and his role in this it just really does do a lot to flesh out his character and kind of establish what this doctor is all about yeah this you know like it's not like the silurians who are the bad guys they're doing some bad things but more out of retaliation out of you know the the humans being the the mm. kind of true villains of the piece which is mm. like that's kind of quite high concept really especially at now like they've never mm. really done the humans being the bad guys and the doctor kind of disagreeing with the humans i, I i'm not mm. sure if up to this point that had ever kind of happened too much you'd had bad humans but ultimately like the overall villain still wasn't the human i think i'm trying to think back kind over of stories. well it, it was like the thing about it was just that it, it was about one of the silurians in there wanted more didn't wasn't too keen on the sharing whereas the leader was yeah and that was where the initial like you know the the initial the doctor trying to negotiate between the humans and the Silurians for kind of a peaceful coexistence kind of came about with that but it was kind of the other just as like some of the other people were trying to you know not trusting the Silurians to go behind and you know same with the Silurians like some of them were not too keen on this idea the world was rightfully theirs in their opinion um so yeah they end up getting the leader and um you know, taking somewhat matters into her own hands but yeah that's kind of what makes it like it's a very powerful and potent story good, but they're like just like us you know yeah. not everyone's going to agree they're not all good they're not all bad they just you know have their own perspectives and um yeah that, that's what makes the whole moral thing in the episode so interesting and the doctor's place in it you know kind of being an in-between kind of understanding the points but They're both yeah you know trying to avoid hostilities wherever possible and um trying to mediate trying to get this you know to a peaceful yeah trying to get them to agree to some sort of peaceful um peaceful coexistence which obviously didn't end up happening in the end no sadly not but i mean it's kind of where the story had to go about it you know changing the whole planet in the 70s mm -hmm. and yeah but it's you know it treats it as a sad ending which is quite nice the doctor kind of loses in some ways um, yeah but yeah and then also like you know moving on to tom baker arc in space another kind of powerful story and it really kind of shows the dynamic between the between the companions and how he's going to act you know like mm. telling sarah jane she's useless and then you know to make her get angry and cruel free you mm. know and it's just his, his whole demeanor it's crazy like you know how he was the doctor so quickly like you know mm. even within a, the first story he's so comfortable in the role it's kind of Absolutely. scary <laughs> how quickly <laughs> he was just like yeah i know what i'm doing like you know just let me do it and all systems go yeah literally <laughs> I think, like, what's nice, though, is obviously in those early days, I think, well, maybe he they started filming not long after getting the role, so it wasn't too big a, maybe too big a build-up. But obviously, you only had kind of three actors before you. Like, the longer it goes on, the more pressure there is because you've got this massive catalogue of library, you know, of people, like, amazing, incredible actors. Yeah. And it's like, Jesus Christ, like, <laughs> I'm joining these... Mm -hmm. 13 you know john hurt chris fairkos and david Tennant, you know tom baker william hartnell is it's a uh
a really it's a really crazy you know roster of, of actors to be to be joining you know in the in mm. in, in, in jo- playing the doctor but um yeah then uh four to doomsday was that was uh kind of where the second yeah. story started to be a bit Dick. Yeah, we, we were talking about it because that was the last one I've watched. And I was just saying, like, the first three parts about it, I mean, they're not particularly action-packed. They don't particularly... But they're, they're fine, kind of, as a sort of a character piece in a way. You know, you do get enough of a sense of who this Doctor is and what he's kind of all about and, like, kind of the companion dynamic. Adric's really whiny. Um <laughs> Yeah, you know, Keegan's. I think the really, visitation really would have been. Wants to get out of here. <laughs> I think the visitation would have been a better, a stronger second story. Actually, I think if they'd gone with that okay. one as the second story, because I, I think I mean, that I think this was... oh. it shows a lot more of who the Fifth Doctor is, like the visitation. I think like it's a really yeah. strong story. I guess I don't think on paper Four to Dooms there was a bad one for that. It's just. That fourth episode is rough, <laughs> like really rough, um, and you know, it's not particularly. Yeah, as I said, there's not very much action to it. It's not like I can see like a lot of people could probably find that quite boring. Really. Yeah, I remember it being a bit of more of a talky one, and I was very excited. I was like, "This isn't really four to Doom's Day. Like, this is four to Boar's Day, Snoozeville mm. pulling in." Yeah, I, I remember I was like, um, I wasn't really like vibing it when I was watching it. I was like, this is fine, but like, I wasn't, I wasn't like going to be raving about it. Yeah, I, to be honest, I've kind of forgotten a lot about it since since mm. watching it for the first time. Which you know, that's kind of it's a shame for us, you know, the Doctor's kind of second story for it to be be like you know like that. Um, so. Yeah, mm. on to the Sixth Doctor's Attack of the Cybermen, which is actually pretty good compared to story. compared to his first story, Twin Dilemma, <laughs> which I defend him being good. It's the twin plot line. It's like Quentin Baker's good. Like it's fine what they did with it, but it was just so dumb doing it one at an end of a season. <laughs> mm. Like I get it, they wanted it so then you, you know next season you could head straight into. The next Doctor, which, you know, I think maybe they should do at some point. Have a Doctor regenerate halfway through a season. Like, imagine, like, mm. how much of an awesome publicity stunt that would be. Say, oh, yeah, Jodie Whittaker's going to be filming season. Well, I should do the next season. But say she stays on for the next season. But she leaves in, like, episode three. Like, they do a mid-series mm. two-parter. She dies and regenerates in that one. Like, why does the Doctor, like, regenerating always have to be a new series thing? Like, especially if you're doing the same show ru- runner and so on. Like, it, in some ways, the show of Doctor Who is through the companion's eyes anyway. So it would be the mm. companion's adventure, seeing this person completely change and, you know, dealing with that. I, uh, that's the thing. I, mm. It's uh, it's weird. The ensemble is constantly changing and it's, it's interesting. And this is why series one worked so much better better i think is because it you know it was through rose's eyes you know mm. that was that was how it was portrayed the series and yeah. we learned as she learned you know we never knew anything more than what the companions did but the issue is now we know kind of everything the doctor does and the companions are the ones who are lagging behind mm. And in some ways, it's like, well, you kind of want enough a time jump where the Doctor's been doing some stuff for a while and there's stuff we don't know about. You know, enough, mm. uh, not time war level, because that's obviously universe changing. Yeah. But I think there should be something, you know, that's happened and the Doctor doesn't want to talk about it. You know, something like that, I think it would be really interesting mm. to, to learn again and to be like, okay, who is this person? Like, um... Maybe the Doctor finding out, you know, she was a timeless child off screen in some ways would have been more interesting. And then, like, slowly we find out more about, like, she was that child. Mm. You know, that, uh, not that I'm particularly fond of that story, but I think it's more interesting if 
the doctor has some revelations off screen so that yeah. we then as an audience are learning at the same time as a companion which makes us one connect to the companion more because we can understand their frustration of the doctor not opening up and talking about it because it's like um it's like you can't no trail of thought's gone damn it mm. i was gonna say something and now it's gone oh yeah so like when she's acting all coy about her home planet gallifrey and she's mm. you know not wanting to talk about it to the companions it's like ugh, we know about the time war it's not like interesting to us anymore like we know everything there no. is to know we know how it start pretty much started and we know how it finished so you know we know that it was really saved and it's yeah it's in a pocket universe boohoo like i don't know why the doctor's so sad about that it's not like she ever mm. wants to go back there but um no it, just, it kind of weirds me i get like your people being gone and you being sad that you can never go back even if you wanted to but the fact that it's, it's in that pocket universe you know so it's not too bad but i guess she got sad because she saw it was all destroyed but also i was like well you didn't exactly pop in for a visit you know I no know. I still hate that the master somehow did that all by himself. Like, what the what the frick? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, moving mm. on from that one. Um, Attack of the Cybermen, uh, solid story, I think. You know, just a solid story. Although I don't know quite like if we're talking about it as a perspective of a second story, it doesn't I wouldn't say it necessarily felt like one as no. such. And I think that the issue is is cause it was that over the you know over two different series it was more like a series opener big dramatic let's do the cybermen let's get people to like the doctor against uh you know classic favorite um, obviously that was there just it wasn't classic doctor who then but you know no. over one of our fan favorite you know cybermen which you know solid story works does does the job shows you know the doctor's kind of heroic and getting stuff sorted won't take no shit kind of thing um mm. so it works then is it is it's, it's like it's fine it's not like i think the doctor's pretty much who he is at that point i think you kind of you get kind of too twin dilemma sets him up too much to be this thing so you, that you know you kind of had to expect him to be that and it's a shame that you know mm. they never got to do the sixth doctor master plan of you know slowly kind of revealing the layers that they wanted to show mm. him having a bit like Christopher Eccleston really yeah um, and yeah then Sylvester McCoy's was that Paradise Towers was I that think so one? was that his second I think yeah, it I'm is I'm pretty sure it was yeah 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 paradise towers what so was... not a particularly great first couple of stories <laughs> um his whole first series is a bit i mean that yeah because wait what was the other one? Oh, Del delta of the bannerman wow yeah i remember watching that one i got it in basing stoke don't know why i went for that one i don't know why i kind of mm. i think it just it looks <laughs> different like to everything else i was like this is strange mm. and interesting Let's go for it. I remember like sitting, having my portable DVD player at my grandma's because she didn't have a DVD player, and uh, I had a McDonald's and I was watching Delta and the Bannerman. Just a really weirdly vivid memory of that one. Mm. I have actually watched it twice, and mm. so that must mean it's not terrible because usually when I hate one, I'm like, oh god. Not compared to the others, no. Yeah, it's it's all right, and I, I think realized that was. I was it's like it's only three episodes actually paradise towers now that is one which i expected to be awesome and oh. let me down i love the concept <laughs> yeah. of it you know a nice spa paradise which is like you know I, actually a nightmare perfect yeah. setup yeah that was that was when i got relatively early on well the thing about it was was that i was i think this was like for our school's uh, celebration, like I got some sort of thing, and then I got W. H. Smith vouchers oh, for it. Yes, it's yes. supposed to be used on school, um, school related things. But I went in there. I didn't. I didn't realize this actually till later because I had like a couple left over, and I just like looked at the um, terms and conditions. Like, oh, it's supposed to be done on these things. Okay, but I went into the one in Godalming, and like I looked, I, I just kind of felt like getting some Doctor Who there, and I think that was one of the ones which was 
I, I think I just got that because that was the one that was kind of low in price and all the others, <laughs> which I, remember, I wouldn't be surprised about. I, but like, yeah, I just went up to the desk and got it. Like, and they didn't even question it in terms of the vouchers. So. Yeah, I, honestly, they never they never looked too happy in WH Smiths. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, I bought stuff with you know vouchers like that before. I just don't think they particularly care. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, what does it matter? But I remember like Seeds of Doom was always one which was in W H Smith. I remember that one just vividly on like the turnstile for DVDs. Um, yeah, I don't know why they randomly had Doctor Who DVDs in there. It was a very random choice for. W. H. Smith, but W. H. Smith did branch out like a fair bit more, and actually, they still, they still do. Like, you go to someone in Guildford now, and it's like two floors, and they do still have quite a large DVD section, do they toy do, section. Do they do and, classic yeah. Doctor Who though? Still, yeah, they they still do. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Last I time I went, they did, and I was only like less than a year ago. So before lockdown. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's uh, I I mostly got mine either online from the BBC shop, um, mm. which was always exciting. Amazon because sometimes they were cheaper depending on the two, or if I ever got them in person, it was it was a uh, W H Smith, uh, not W H Smith, H and V. I only said W H yeah. Smith because I was thinking of you. But uh, <laughs> yeah, H and V. Um, I I remember more actually the ones that I bought. I don't know. I can weirdly remember kind of where I got what, strangely. Um, yeah, roughly, same. I, yeah, I got... I mean, I know, oh, of course. Mm, oh, sorry. Uh, I got, like, Delta and the Bannerman, the Aztecs, um, Vengeance of Barrel Special Edition, I got at, uh, at H&V. I know those three I got there for sure. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a large majority I got online or for presents. But um, yeah, yeah. Where, where did you mainly get yours from? Like Amazon, um, or I mean, a, a, probably a majority, as you say, was Amazon. Um, it was a vast majority. There was quite a few. There was a few which you got from W. H. Smith. I think also Time Meddler. Um, we would and um, because like especially to start with, like we we because I used to live in Godalming, we went to Godalming a lot for a while. So like we actually got quite a lot of Dot Two DVDs in that particular W. H. Smith that they had there. Um, I got a few from Who Won on the Island of White. Oh, yeah. White. Yeah, yeah. Which was a Doctor Who dedicated shop, which is there. Um, very, very nice place. Um, uh, and I mean, you know, I... There's been a few other places. I couldn't... I mean, CEX as well. I got a few from there. Um... Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's few nice. places. It was fun collecting over it the was. years. It's kind of a it shame was. when you've got them all. I think it's yeah. a nice thing to collect slowly as well. I don't think like you know sometimes I wish I'd like oh I wish I could just buy these all at once. But I'm actually actually in hindsight it was so much more fun getting them slowly, watching yeah. you know the collection slowly build. Man, that's a much so, more manageable to watch. Fun, yeah, manageable to watch. Yeah, I just remember like getting you know in the post Doctor Who DVDs oh, man. the excitement I got adding them to my collection mm. so much fun but um yeah back to the uh to what we're talking about uh obviously Eighth Doctor no second story so can't really can't really do that it would have been interesting I would have been interested to see what he did next after the movie you know like it would have been mm. I would have liked to have seen not with that production team but you know that doctor at least you know yeah how he went well I mean he always talked about it but yeah never happened but yeah End of a World is a okay story probably I, I think that's a pretty good second story just as far as like it kind of does a Dalek thing in a way to where you kind of take someone to an extreme for like the mm. second story to kind of um, of course, in this case, being the end of the world, it's quite a, a way to take someone for their first experience with them. Yeah, it's kind of. I think it's like him projecting that his his own planet was lost. I think he's maybe trying to share yeah. that loss, maybe as a I deeper guess, thing. Right. Like, oh, your planet's dead too. Like, mm. join the Just club. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> join the club. Yeah, mm. it was. It's. It's like. Watching back, it's you know the forty-five minutes do it's they still go quickly. I don't feel it dragging or anything, 
but um you know it's probably probably my least favorite of the series but i mean that's not saying much like yeah with with everything uh, the long game is also okay there's some decent bits but yeah it's a bit bit more of a filler one more more of like a prequel to setting up the finale really the long game which was good Um, yeah tenth doctor not great second story new earth it's like he spent the first two stories not really being the doctor first one is asleep and then the mm. second one, he gets taken over by Cassandra. And it's like, yeah. it's barely the Doctor True. in it. And I guess, yeah. Like, Tev Doctor didn't actually have the best start, like, to, to a series. But then he had Tooth and Claw and um, School Reunion and uh, Gun in the Fireplace, back-to-back, which were all pretty solid stories. And yeah. then and then Sidemen, which was also great. Yeah, Like, it, yeah. it was fine. It took him a while to get going. But once he got going, it was, it was good. But yeah, like, the first yeah. two were a bit like... I need to watch New Earth again, though. I, I haven't watched that in a very long time. It's not a bad story. It's not. It's not the worst. Great. It's just yeah. But it's not a bad story by any means. I remember it made me feel very ill with all the ill people. <laughs> that was uh yeah, it was kind of gross, Ugh, especially when like just touched them. <laughs> but uh yeah, Beast Blow obviously trash. We you already talked about. about it. Um, Into the Dalek, fine. Yeah, but I, I don't. It's it's a bit weird as a second story. Yeah, I but see. I don't. Not a bad one. I don't like the Doctor facing the Daleks early. I think it it's not good. I think mm-hmm. it doesn't help define who the Doctor is. It's like for both Matt Smith and Capaldi, for some reason Stephen Moffat was like, "Yeah, get out of the way. We that's done. Mm. That's done with now." You know, it's just yeah for me. I mean, I, I guess I guess in a way, like the reason. The thing they have to justify putting it there. Well, partially, I mean, in terms of like you being weird, the second story, I guess, like the fact that they had Deep Breath be so long, it was a longer story. Yeah, so like I guess they kind of, kind of had that kind of encapsulate both in a way. I'm not sure if it really accomplished that, but um, yeah, I mean, it is a bit weird, its placement, and it is a bit weird. Um, that yeah, they do a Dalek story so quickly, but it's it's I I quite like it. I mean, it's not you know gonna it, it it's not like mind blowing or anything, but it's fine. It's pretty decent. Yeah, and then the uh the ghost monument. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is it's not good whether or not you look at it as a story of its own or as a second episode. I don't think. But yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't help too much. I think. Um, as a second, do you know what would have been a good second story as as Jodie's mm-hmm. second one? Witchfinders. I stand by that. I think that would have been a perfect. Yeah. You know, new new body. You know, not being able to do what she used to do as a man. Like you know, already feeling those effects. I think maybe they would have thought, "Oh, it's too risky doing that straight away." But I would have gone the opposite. I'm like, let's put her at her. You know, let's show her. Let's show the audience that she can deal with any situation, no matter how difficult it is. Like she can adapt quickly. Like, yeah, I think that would have been very, you know, ballsy move. But I think it would have been, I think it would have paid off better. You know, um, I think showing, you know, companions the past is better than doing the future. But they wanted the cool cliffhanger. I get that, and ending up in space would only happen if you then do a space adventure. But I feel like yeah. you do kind of sci-fi space, then sci-fi space. It's like. I know, I think it's better to do, like, sci-fi modern day in the past as the second episode. I think it's just a good, especially with a new companion, I think it... I don't know. They I seem mean, to I always mean, take companions first, to the future. I wouldn't fully agree with that. I think a companion's first alien planet is a big <coughs> moment. Um, the first time you set place, set foot on another world, that is, like, a wow moment. This is, you know, really happening. Look at this, you know. It's so different. So I I do think there's value in having that as, if not <laughs> the, you know, the first episode, like, up there, you know. Yeah, I think that, that having the, the first Alien Planet is an important one, but I, I, th- I think, like, in terms of, like, as an audience watching, it's like you kind of do a modern alien threat. I know, that's this is the thing. It's also, like, having to do aliens in every single story. 
sometimes I think maybe it's, you know, do we just do human one where the humans are the villains? You know, sometimes I think that could work quite well. It's strange. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to, to know what to do with Doctor Who and what would work mm. and what wouldn't. It's a, because you want to try new things because you, you can't just keep doing the same because it just doesn't that doesn't work you know no eventually it will yeah. become stale and old you know even if we had russell t doing it all the way till now it would have oh yeah you know was... like imagine that that would have been like i loved yeah. it when he but he left at the right time you know he left when it was still you know top of his yeah. game like yeah you know it was awesome and like even i'm glad moffat left when he did i mean he he, he was going up at the end i think it's because he wasn't trying to balance sherlock as much at the same time which was just a really dumb move um you know trying to do these two big franchises at the same time it's just, you're spreading yourself thin um yeah you know thinking about too much but yeah there we go i think that's that wraps it up that's our the second story Second yeah. story is an important one. I think, you, you know, while the first one's uh, important for introducing the d- new Doctor, I think the second one is uh, important for, for yeah. uh, really solidifying what's going to mm. come up. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess we'll see yeah, what happens when it's the next next Doctor. Yeah. Which I'm always excited to see an next Doctor. Not that I want Jodie to go anytime soon that's not me saying that but mm. I just always like when a new doctor comes in and there's you know a shake up you know it's different yeah. see what they're going to bring what they're going to do different you know that's always exciting yeah so yeah there we go um, what would you say is your favourite second story out of all of them then quickly um maybe the Silurians yeah. Possibly, I think. I think I'm. Um, yeah, yeah. Final answer. <laughs> I'd either go Silurians or Ark, and maybe Ark in Space. Actually, just I need. I'm gonna be watching Silurians again eventually when I get there. Mm. <laughs> Currently hitting the Reign of Terror for my uh, mm. kind of yeah marathoning of Doctor Who, but um. Mm maybe Ark in Space but that's just because I know it more uh, I think I need to rewatch watch again but yeah looking back like the second story isn't too strong from like after the fourth Doctor really it's kind of end of time mm-hmm. end of worlds like alright and like yeah they've just never been that strong like you, there's, there's second episodes of a series which are really strong like Fires of Pompeii like that's you know but it's just it's it's kind of odd like they're still like working out like a lot of the kinks I think in um you know in the second stories it'd be interesting to see if with the next Doctor they could do a really good first story and then a really great second episode will it ever wouldn't happen? that be the dream <laughs> consistency <laughs> of good that is the dream ridiculous never happen not in Doctor Who. <laughs> Uh, what a time to be alive. Right, well, there we go. That's it. Mm. We'll see you next week for some other random topic because there'll be no news. So there we go. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.